I would like to introduce a gentleman that sings a song for you. His name is Jim Nichols. He's part of the Quilts of Valor presentation. He's uh, one of the material girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, sir. Uh, the song they're doing today is not really a song, but what it was, it was written in 1974. And it was a poem, and it was recited then before Congress. And he later put it into an album. As I walked across the county courthouse square, I saw an old man sitting on a park bench. I said, your old courthouse looks a little run down. He said, no, nah, it'll do for our little town. I said, your old flag poles leaned a little bit. And that's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat. So I sat down. He said, is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, well, I don't like to brag, but we're mighty proud of that ragged old flag. <coughs> you see, it got a little hole in the flag there when Washington took it across to Delaware. Got powder burned the night that Francis Scott Key sat watching it and writing, Say Can You See. It got a bad rip down in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at its scene. It almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but it waved on though. Got cut with a short sword at Chancellorsville got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee, Beauregard, Bray, and the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. At Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. In World War II, it turned blood red. Sailed over, she's been in Korea, Vietnam. She went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She waved from our ships on the briny foam. But they thought quit waving back here at home. In her own good land here, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored. Denied and refused. And the government for which it stands scandalized throughout the land. She's getting threadbare and she's wearing thin. But she's in good shape for the shape she's in. Because she's been through the fire before. And I know she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning, we take her down every night. We don't let her touch the ground, and we fold her up right. On second thought, I do like to brag, because I'm mighty proud of that ragged old flag. This American flag was taken off of a shell uh, sinking landing craft in Normandy. The Normandy invasion with American troops and the German troops in 1944. 
uh, loaded with gear. My friend Ken, <coughs> excuse me, he took this flag off the mast as it was sinking. And he took it, put it under his shirt, and he had it under his shirt all the while he went, in, went across the beach. Um, he, he often told me that if that flag could talk, it would tell a lot. A lot of horror stuff. A lot of dying people. People that died for your freedom. So I honor that flag. <clears throat> Foundation was begun in the year 2003 um, by a woman who wanted to see that veterans and military personnel were covered with the healing and consoling and the warmth of a quilt. Those quilts are called quilts of valor. The um, the quilts that we'll be giving today were made by members of your community and the material girls and made through donations from members of this community financially and materially. Um, the, uh, the thing that we like to think about with these quilts is that a basic quilt has three layers and the top of it, as you can see from the table and from the, when the quilts are given, there are a lot of pieces. I did turn on my... <laughs> Those pieces represent being part of the community, part of families, part of businesses, um, and all the things that go with a serviceman as he goes through his duties. Um, the middle is usually what we call batting. It's called wadding or other things in other countries, but that's the part that provides the warmth. And that's what we're looking to present here. The backing is usually all one piece, and that's the part that holds us together. Um, can be our country, our community, our county, our state, 
but all of these are tied together with stitches. Those stitches by these quilters represent a lot of caring for the person who receives this. And um, sometimes there's laughter involved, sometimes there's other tears involved when they think about this, the sacrifices that have been made. So um, these quilts aren't just a blanket. The lady who did the foundation really felt that this should be the citizen's purple heart. And uh, we're gonna go with it. Uh, we think they're pretty special. You can't buy one, you can't get one for your birthday. Uh, all of these men have earned theirs um, in the sacrifices they made by leaving their families, their jobs, by doing what they did while they were serving, and by continuing to serve after a conflict was over, and by coming back to their community and still are giving. So um, I would like to present an award to them in the form of a certificate, and then we will also give each man his Quilt of Valor. So when I call your name, if you would stand up and the certificates, she's got them. Um, Richard Ashenbrenner. And what I know is that he served in the Army in Korea and Army <coughs> Artillery, A Battery, 11th Field Artillery. Can you tell us anything more than that? I'm happy to be old. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you joined or were you drafted? I was uh, uh, 17. Uh -huh. Did you have family, brothers and sisters at home? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was stationed in Japan at the time, and uh, this little fracas showed up, and uh, we were packing our stuff, and I asked the first sergeant, I said, what should I pack? And he said, don't worry about it. He says, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Other than that, I, um, you know, the, the soldiers that were a little green and they for did a good job. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, 
I have an, on my list, I have an Al Baum and a Joe Bauman. This is Al? Yes. All right. And Al served in the Navy in Korea and he served from 1948 to 1968. It's a long time. Um, he served aboard three ships, a LSMR, an AF, and a DDG, two tours of recruiting duty, and retired YNC. So, anything else you could tell us? Well. No, not really. I, I retired in 68. How old were you when you went in? Uh, I was almost 18. Mm -hmm. I was 38 when I was Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and did you leave other kids in your family at home? I had four other brothers, but they weren't home. I was, they were all, I was, I was the youngest in the family. Okay. Did they were they also in the service? Yes, one of them was. Okay. And when you were aboard these ships, what did you do? I was in paperwork as a pusher. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And we have you have your certificate, and. Uh, this would be your quote. services from 1954 to 1956. So because you were in special services, does that mean you can't tell us what you did? Yeah, I can, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you tell us a little bit about what you did? I, I've got a memory, but it's short, but at the time after I was cleared by the CIA, documentary of secret classified and top secret I was sent to school you can Korean. sit if you're more comfortable you want to this, sit sure this is okay okay thank you I was trained as a projectionist to show the training films for the Kansas Nebraska Texas Air National Guard fighter pilots at that time, of course, we created <coughs> Comrade Snow. The heat-seeking missile and so forth was an insist state. They had to be shown and trained, and that's it. And you were the guy. <laughs> well, I was one of the many in that class to show the films to the pilots. Could you remain standing for a minute? And then I'll put your. Okay.
Robert Ladd. And Robert served in World War II. He was in the Navy. He also was a young person. He was single and was 17 when he enlisted. He had four sisters and he was a fellow born in Iowa person and worked with his dad on the farm. After his service, he returned home and continued to work on the farm. Um, he served from 1945 through 1946, and he's going to tell us a little about his service. quizzing his family, that's all I know. <laughs> Unlike everybody else so far, I was old when I went in. I was 20. <laughs> I already had a few years already. Uh, I went into the Army, went into basic training, did my little stuff. They did the test and they put me into computers. So in 1965, I joined the World of Computers. And Went on to, uh, on that class, I was uh, graduated second in my class, went to some more training, eventually made it to Vietnam though. And then after Vietnam, I ended up in San Francisco. It was with the 15th Army Corps, and they deactivated that uh, corps when I was there. And I was very honored to be on the uh, part of folding up the flag for uh, when they deactivated it. So. Fred Parker Sr. And he served in the Coast Guard 
in World War II. And what I found interesting, he was also 20 when he joined, but I asked why the Coast Guard, and he said, well, there were other guys from Pittsville that joined the Coast Guard, so that's what I did. Um, and he had eight in his family, six were boys, two girls, and four of those boys were in the service at one particular time together. Um, and he would serve from 1942 to 45. And will you share with us some of the things about your service? Well, I, uh, when I first went in, of course, I went over to Curtis Bay, Maryland and trained with Coast Guard people. <laughs> and then uh, after that, they shipped me up to Boston. And from Boston, they sent me out to Block Island. And I got a sample of uh, what the Coast Guard did, uh, uh, you know, walking seven, six or seven miles a day uh, in a four hour period. and. Uh, Punch the clock every certain distance, and one guy with a submachine gun, and the other guy with just a pistol on his side, and flare things. And, but anyway, that was the uh, first chapter, and uh, then uh, they uh, sent me to radar school in Groton, Connecticut. And uh, after radar school, uh, I was assigned to the uh, PF. Patrol Frigate 69, uh, the, uh, the Davenport. It sounds easy, but I was a radar man on the Davenport, and uh, our main duty was to protect merchant ships and to uh, whatever the submarines were in the area and done this problem. We went out six or eight hours with a retiring search plan and made circles and hope we caught them in between. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, 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 at, at battle stations, when you got in contact with a submarine, why, you had a different duty. And it, it surprised me, but uh, uh, from a uh, uh, radar man, why they put me for the captain's control talker. And so, I, I carried messages between the captain of commander and the lieutenant commander of Swink down in the Combat Information Center, where I was a member of the Combat Information Center. But, uh, but uh, anyway, I mean, this don't make me a hero, but one, one of the jobs I had for the Y guns and K guns on the side of the ship that charges why uh, I'd, uh, Captain would tell me, uh, said, uh, depth charge, said pattern Charlie, or said pattern, pattern Baker. And of course, I'd tell him, I mean, I don't want to worry out with my long story here. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, but uh, the, the one that I remember the most, and then in the bow of the ship, they had a hedgehog, they called the Navy, decided that explosive device for, and it wouldn't explode unless they hit the uh, submarine, you know, and then it would explode and all of them explode and you weren't quite sure you got them. But anyway, this one night we were taking a convoy with uh, some destroyers and other people to uh, uh, southern France and, uh, and uh, or in Algeria. Uh, in, anyway, uh, uh, we would call the battle stations and, and everything, and uh, so uh, we come in contact with the submarine that was directly in front of us, and uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I kept giving the captain the ranges and bearings from the combat information center, and then he said, prepare to fire a hedgehog. For the Y guns, the K guns, I pushed the switches when he told me. I, I didn't think on anything. I was just taking his place for a minute or two. 
But anyway, that's why I said uh, uh, hedgehog control, prepare to fire. And then the captain said, fire. And I said, fire. And the captain says, we got the son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> When he came home, he, um, he, he looked for his bride, married her, and uh, then worked at Beer and Consolidated uh, for a lot, a lot of years. And uh, they have a pretty special day coming up on the 29th of April. They will have their 70th wedding anniversary. Wow. He was in the South Pacific, 129th Infantry, 37th Division. He received a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star, and he has something he wants to say. It was quite an experience. Uh, I don't know. You know, if I knew I'd come out again, I'm out all right, I wouldn't mind going to it again. <laughs> sometimes you had fun, sometimes you were scared. Uh, uh, I was wounded with mortars, and I had two other pretty close calls. Last end of 45. I got my living up pretty bad. Sent me home in the hospital ship. I spent about seven or eight months in the hospital down in the Houston General Hospital down by uh, Boston or San Antonio. And I came home. I helped my father for a couple of months. He was a jack of all trades. He did research work and stuff like that. And I, I looked up my little girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> kind of followed her. She ended up in rapids and so did I. He also told me that he thought that God had a little to do with him making it through all of those things. Russ Stimmick 
Russ served in the Army in Korea, 1953 to 55. Um, there were two boys in their family. The first one enlisted, but Russ got drafted. <laughs> uh, he was, at the time, he was in, at, in college at Stevens Point. Um, he did share with me that he played football there, and he was in the very first team to go undefeated and untied for the year. So, very sad. And he was a tank driver. And is there anything else you would share with us about your time in the service? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think, uh, really, we got trained to do a job, but the people at home didn't have it. So they were the real heroes. I think that's a very nice sentiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on that certificate. It has a person's name and it says, on behalf of the Quilts of Valor Foundation, in recognition of your service and your sacrifice for this nation, it's a privilege to honor and comfort you through the award of this Quilt of Valor. Though we may never know the depth of your sacrifice to protect and defend the United States of America, as a gesture of gratitude from a grateful nation, we award to you this quilt of valor. And we want to thank all of you for coming today and for sharing. Um, I, it's just a good thing. And thank you, gentlemen, for all of your service and your sacrifice.